Hey, hey, thank you so much for joining us. We are back with another amazing and fun interview. Now, as you know, I hope you've been taking notes, reaching out to our guest. I don't ever know what order the interviews will be in, but we are rolling right along Sundays, 9 p.m. Eastern. Tonight, our guest, Miss Imani, how are you? Hi, Tony. I'm good. Hi, everyone. Awesome. Awesome. Now, where are you located? I am currently in Detroit, Michigan, um, and it is finally warm here. It's usually cold all year. Okay. Now, how long have you been in Detroit? Uh, about five years. I moved here after grad school um, to pursue career opportunities in healthcare, and I just stayed. Okay. Wow. So healthcare opportunities in Detroit. Yes. Do they have like a certain population that you wanted to serve or something? Absolutely. So I um, pursued healthcare from a pretty early age. High school, I knew I wanted to go into the field. We have a joke in a Nigerian culture. You can become a doctor, lawyer, engineer. So when I was younger, I said, okay, let's do doctor. Um, and my parents helped me figure out how to volunteer and find out what the career field was like. And right before college, I made the switch to health administration, which is like the business operations, the stuff that I love to do. I was always really good at that. Um, and then through grad school, you find out how you can get into training programs across the country. So I placed in Detroit at Henry Ford Health. A lot of people know Ford Motor Company. So there's also a hospital system here that's um, known, well known in the industry. And I decided to just move here on faith. No family, no previous friends or community here. Um, but it's been a great learning opportunity, growing opportunity. And as you can imagine, in the pandemic, we've learned a lot in the industry. So um, it's been good. Wow. OK, so are you still on the health administrative side of things? Yes, that is my nine to five every day. Um, I love kids. So I originally started in pediatrics um, and have expanded my role and opportunity so far to get more into strategy and learning more about um, other physicians and specialties. Wow. Okay. I see. Now, at what point did you intersect with me online? Like, how did you bump? Oh, yeah. in? Um, I think it was around 2020 or 2021. Um, originally, we were working a lot, but after the initial pandemic, kind of the shock wore off and people had a normal schedule, I transitioned to another role and had more time at home. And um, in my own journey, that's when I experienced probably the worst heartbreak of my life. And I knew that I needed mentorship guidance and I wanted it from men and I wanted it from men of faith, but also just people who were going to be honest and raw because I realized I was missing something and somehow I found your channel. <laughs> and so from there, I said, okay, I'm going to lock in and listen to what this guy is saying. It makes sense. It doesn't sound like it's anything contrary to my moral beliefs, but I know I need new information. So I feel like it was, you know, the Lord that led me to your page, but it definitely has been confirmation of a lot of things I needed to learn. Um, and from there, I locked in. I got interested in helping other people. I, in healthcare, do a lot of leadership. And so already had a love and passion for working with people, but expanded it by learning from you. Mm, wow. I love that. I love that. And it's, I got to be thankful for the pandemic because I've met a few people yeah. <laughs> that found me in the pandemic. And it's like everybody was, you know, living a different life. Yep. So that's amazing. Now, with the healthcare, one of the reasons why I'm doing these interviews is just because there's authors out there, there's coaches out there, and there's different people who do different things similar to what I do. And then there's people in other industries, but I wanted to be able to introduce to my audience different people and, you know, share their gifts. So outside of healthcare, what have you been drawn to in the areas of, you know, your gifts or passions or purpose? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. I want to talk about um, kind of the moment I guess I realized healthcare wasn't enough for me. So it's definitely a great career field. I recommend it. If you like serving people, you don't think you want to go the clinical route like medical school or nursing, there's a whole other field, public health and health administration. And I love it. And it pays the bills and it helps fund my dreams. So I definitely recommend people looking into that for sure. Um, but I got to a point of success, the area I thought that I would have in my life where this would be the goal and I would be totally satisfied and I wasn't. 
So I said, okay, I need to figure out something else that actually really matters to me. And it's always been a level of empathy for people's story um, and really meeting people where they are so that they can move forward. And through the vehicle of me seeking therapy and life coaching, I got immediately interested in doing the same thing for other people. I didn't know I was coaching people before or already doing that in healthcare, already doing that in my social circle. But once I had language for it, it was like an immediate light bulb in my head said, yeah, you need to do this too. Um, so 2021, I decided to pursue life coaching as a, as a side business and, and currently still do it. Absolutely love it. Um, also wrote my book, Seven Hard Shoots of Healings, where I really just delve deep into how do you get past these hurdles of you know, dealing with yourself, right? We all were kind of stuck to an extent by ourselves at home in the pandemic. And that opened my eyes to a lot of my unhealthy patterns that were contributing to, as I mentioned earlier, a heartbreak that I just went through and feeling not fulfilled with all this success. And it was, it just felt very empty in a lot of ways. And so I realized, hey, I want people to get help the way that I did. I had amazing coaches that really helped me in my journey. And then folks that I learned from, on YouTube or just watching a lot of their training or really understanding, you know, how do you work on yourself? <laughs> like we talk about everybody else is the issue, but how do you focus on you? Um, and once I learn how to do that, I want other people to learn how to do the same thing. Mm, I love that. And you know what? The beauty is you work in healthcare as well. So it's like you get to see a whole nother side of things of service and not a lot of life coaches have that experience of, knowing what that service world is like and that purpose world is like. And so you have the best of both worlds. And it was 2021, you say you kind of got thrust into that. Yeah. And when you do coaching, do you like one-on-one -on -one coaching more? Is that kind of like where the space you're in right yes. now? Absolutely. I loved one-on-one -on -one coaching for sure. And I think some of that was developed in healthcare. So I know a lot of times people were scared about like, what journey do I pick? Or I don't know if I'm going to love this. Just pick something <laughs> and, you know, try it out. Because in healthcare, I learned two really critical just life lessons. One, people all go through everything <laughs> and you never know what people are going through. And in healthcare, you meet people at honestly their most vulnerable state. They have a diagnosis or a family member who's going through something they never expected. They don't know what to do. They're terrified, they're emotionally raw, and you experience people in a way you typically wouldn't. Um, but then you also really learn human behavior, not just patients, but your peers, the leaders, the people who have to make decisions on behalf of those who are really vulnerable. And so I think my time learning that and being in the field prepared me in a way that I couldn't have orchestrated that if I tried and <laughs> tried to pursue that from the beginning. But I really learned how to study, observe, analyze, like what's contributing to what you see in front of you. And I think that truly helped me become a more well-rounded coach for sure. Mm, I love that. And I love how you took that experience over there in the pathway that you were what I call a birth path. Yep. <laughs> yep. Your parents kind of put you on that healthcare mm -hmm. path, but then you were able to take that, do it, succeed win there and pivot and do something else that you discovered wow. as like this is purpose where Absolutely. whereas had we known had parents known life coaching was a thing nobody yeah. you know knew that <laughs> and, yeah. and even being a therapist like that's a thing but you don't really hear about it or think right. about it as a child you know you exactly a lot of therapists are drawn to it after they've gone through some things and some exactly. experienced some things. Yeah. But we all kind of think like, if you want to make money, be successful, be stable, doctor, <laughs> lawyer. Uh <-huh. laughs> so that that is amazing. Now, random question. Do you think your generation of Nigerian Americans will raise children the same way y'all were raised? Like, do you think your generation would be like doctor, lawyer, engineer. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna support uh, you. That's a really good question. Um, I've never thought about that. I think they will be more open, but I will say, so for context, my father's Nigerian, my mother is African-American and I grew up here my entire life, born here. 
Um, so there was a bit of a balance, but not really. <laughs> the expectation, the bar was very high. My mom is the same way. Um, and so I think their perspective is just what they knew to collectively, which there are some stereotypes. But for us, um, I'm 28. So I think for our generation, we know so much more about what the options are. So I think we'll be a little bit more flexible as long as we can understand there's a career path because the sacrifice for an immigrant family is so large that we just can't afford to allow our family and communities to settle for a job when we know that more is in you. And it's really an encouragement, but it's also like, hey, the families came together to help put you in a position where no one else has been, help put you through school, help come, you come to this country, help get your visa so that you have more options in the last generation. So ultimately, yes, there should be more options, but I think we still need to vet the plan and it has to make sense to us in the way that a lot of our parents took a risk. My parents took a risk on me when I said I'm not going bio pre-med and I'm going to administration. And at that time, nobody knew what this was. It wasn't common, um, but they let me jump on it. Um, I was able to prove to them, hey, people really do this full time. It's, it's a real job. It's not, you know, just being a coordinator or you can actually make a career out of it. Uh, so I think we'll probably have a little bit of flexibility, too, with our kids just trying to hear them out more than we were heard out, probably. Mm, that's amazing. And I always wonder about that because my wife's uh, two of her close friends are Nigerian. Uh -huh, yep. <laughs> And both of them are doctors. <laughs> yep. And, and one is like, you know, the doctor in the hospital, you know, like, I don't know what you call it, family doctor or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the other is a doctor of physical therapy, you know. Okay. So she's, and it's just kind of interesting for me to see as a Black American to see, like, individuals who their parents come from another country and they just have that focus and that drive. But it's, I'm learning the more I look into it, that is so much that you gain from college and yeah. just having a schedule, having mm -hmm. deadlines, like, although I'm an entrepreneur through and through, I respect the formally educated individuals yeah. because when you do figure out entrepreneurship, you are a force to be reckoned with because you still understand structure. Yeah. Where sure. for entrepreneurs like me who don't have a college degree, <laughs> I don't understand, you know, the structure, the yeah. deep orientation. I don't understand. I'm all over. <laughs> and so I help the formally educated kind of tap more into that creative side, that entrepreneurial exactly. side. But then when they figure it out, they blow me out the water because of the things that they learn from being yeah. formally educated. So that's amazing that you have the best of both worlds. Absolutely. Now, have you, outside of coaching, is there anything else you've tapped into, like a book or, oh yeah, you did mention a book. What's yeah. the title of it again? The title is Seven Hard Truths of Healing. Um, and it was inspired by really my journey of nobody told me I should encounter these things or I was going to run into these roadblocks or just things that I was shocked about, which I thought healing was a good thing, right? Which it is, but it, it comes at a price. <laughs> and so I wanted people to be aware um, to not feel guilty for anything that they encounter in their process and to know that it's not just you, you're not crazy, this is real. If it feels like a lot of resistance, you're on the right path. Um, and so I originally wrote it, honestly, as a journal entry and I felt like, hey, I should share this with other people. It might help somebody. And the feedback has been incredible. So it's on Amazon. I definitely recommend people going to get it. It's less than $10. It, you won't even miss it. You know what? I know you're educated when your journal entry can become a book. Because <laughs> listen, I ain't writing no journal <laughs> good enough for it to become a book. So that <laughs> you, you was in that journal going to town. <laughs> yeah, and, I've always been a writer. <laughs> always. Yeah. And so here's the thing. Now, this is something else I want I want people to think about because not just you know, families who migrate to another country, whether it's American move or somewhere, somebody move here. But it's a lot of families who don't, we don't pick up on our kids' gifts. And I'm thinking about that even with my two sons. Because you said, I've always been a writer. Mm -hmm. But when I, so when you said that, I'm like, man, you could also be one of the greatest journalists in America. One of the greatest film screenwriters 
greatest authors, playwrights. It's like those gifts. I want you to keep exploring them because it's so much that it could turn into. Because when you could write a journal entry and then flip that into a book, that right there, that's a gift that you might need your own blog site, you know, or your own. Oh, that's a good idea. You know, yeah, because you just never know because you could blog and then other people who come to you yeah. can have a blog on there. And I have clients who started a blog, just them by themselves. And then within a couple of years, their blog was earning them 250000 a year. Wow. Because wow. of the ad networks that yeah. blogs have yeah. on them. You know, when you go read a blog, you bump it into the ads. Right, right. Exactly. It's in the middle of the article. It's on the side. It's here uh -huh. and there. And then there was a big decrease in it. Like they literally went from like 250 you know, down to like 100 But I think they're kind of figuring it out again. So okay. that's okay. something, you know, that your off day blog to where you yeah. can continue to journal, but journal for the world at large. Absolutely. I mean, that could be something. Now tell me one of the hard truths, one of the seven hard truths. What's what's one that really sticks out to you? Oh man. Um of course I think they're all good, right? I think the guilt. That's probably one of the hardest pieces of choosing to continue on your healing journey. Because for me, and like many other people, probably every client I've had, uh, you're probably the first or the only in your family that's deciding to make a drastic change in how you handle relationships with men, with friends, with peers, even with family. And so a lot of that, you know, disassociating from your family normal comes with a lot of guilt. And you don't have the support from them because you're choosing to be different and not because they don't love you, but just because it's different and they haven't had a chance to accept this new version of you yet. So you have a lot of resistance. And sometimes that feels like harm to your mom, to your dad, to your sister, who's always known you, but now you're a new version of yourself. And then you feel bad for feeling better about yourself. So it's an endless cycle of, wait a minute, guilt is if you actually intended like you did something wrong. You didn't do anything wrong by choosing to heal. You didn't do anything wrong by saying, wait a minute, I'm the pattern in my bad relationships. I need to do something different. I need new knowledge. I need to do something different from what my mom did or what my sister did or what my aunt taught me or what grandma taught me. Um, but it's hard to accept that and to be on your island for a little bit and to be isolated for a while and for the family to maybe um, resist that until they accept that okay she's changed and that's just the version that we have now to move forward uh so that was something for me that was difficult if i want people to know like it's okay it's not you you didn't cause any harm you're just disrupting the cycle and that comes with some pressure of questioning yourself but don't question yourself keep moving forward mm, that is amazing I, woo, I almost had to do a holy ghost dance on that one that, that right there okay. <laughs> you know what I had never, I don't think I've thought about it like that, but I do understand what you mean when friends or family or whoever have to meet a new version of you mm -hmm. and they realize that what they used to could get away with okay. disrespecting you today yeah. and then y'all make up tomorrow is and you change and say, no, you're going to respect me. Right. And if you want to come back, you need to apologize for disrespecting mm -hmm. me. And then we could start on a fresh foot. And exactly. you know, stories, stories like that, because people have those different yeah. situations. Now, I thought you were just only talking about the heartbreak, healing from a heartbreak with a relationship, okay. like, you know, a, a love situation. But the mm -hmm. way you just put it, that can kind of apply to any type of relationship. Absolutely. It does. And a lot of times I would say for more often than not, that heartbreak and a love relationship started with family because you learn your patterns from your parents, from your environment, from wherever you grew up. That was your normal. And that's what you repeated until you knew different. So same thing for me. I grew up in a dysfunctional family situation. I repeated the cycle until I said, OK, wait a minute. <laughs> this isn't working for me. So it's all related. Um, and the more that you can trace back, the easier it's going to be for you to start peeling those layers and say, OK, I can't do that no more. This is just auntie did it. Grandma did it. Mom did it. Cousin did it. I don't have to do it, too. And no condemnation for them. But it's definitely like, OK, I have awareness that this is not working so I can stop. 
Um, but it's true. It's difficult because your parents, a lot of times, like they gave you identity. So who are you to question that? Who are you to say like, no, that's not who I am or that's not who I want to be. And I have more years ahead of me than behind me. So I can make a change that will totally change my life. So yeah, that, that causes resistance in your family for sure, because you are reestablishing what they thought they gave you. Um, and out of a good place too, they didn't mean any harm. They, they gave you the best that they absolutely could, but that didn't work for you. And it worked for everybody else, but not for you. And that's okay. And you're going to feel bad, but it's not real. <laughs> it's perceived harm. It's not real harm. Mm. <laughs> hey, Amani, I'm like one of those proud daddies that you know, <laughs> listen to their daughter talk and it's like, girl, you smart. I didn't know you were that smart. <laughs> you making me think like, man, I want more educated people to become life coaches yeah because you thinking differently so yeah. you got book knowledge but that book knowledge then got your mind to turn into where you tapped into wisdom yeah because what you talking about is wisdom that 60 year old women still ain't figured out and you how old i'm 28 28 i'm, I'm sitting here I'm, I'm about to I'm about to go to you on my mentor dot life. Yeah, absolutely. Imani and <laughs> I'm about to go to my mentor dot life and book a session. I'm sitting there. I'm like, this 28-year-old getting me together. That's well, something happens. you said earlier was, was really key, and, and I really hope the parents listening lock into that is recognize your kids' gifts because for as long as I can remember, and I honestly mean that as a child, people have always told me you have wisdom beyond your years. And I've always written and I've always had certain skills that I'm now really tapping into. And my parents definitely cultivated that. but They did it to the extent that they were aware. So their path was, OK, we kind of know business. We know certain stable careers. Pick one of those. God got you, which was the method in my house. And it worked. But recognize, like, even if somebody has insight as a child, that's not just random. That's a gift. So I can't even take credit. Penn State, my school can't take the credit for the wisdom. Like none of my experience can take the credit. That was definitely a God-given gift, but it is up to you to cultivate it, right? And so seeking knowledge, learning from other coaches, really wanting to fulfill your life with something that's meaningful. For me, I didn't want a job. I never did. I want an impact and I wanted to help change people's lives. So every client to me is like, it's a victory. I get so happy when I hear clients, you know, like finally get it or they don't feel bad or, you know, they left the toxic situation or they're finally starting to love themselves for the first time and actually discover what they like. That to me is like, oh, it's worth it. It's so worth it. And you know what I could tell about your spirit is uh, you're willing to listen. Yeah. You know, I could tell that you are. You could speak because you're being asked a question, but I can also sense that you have a listener's heart and that you can hear somebody and feel where they're coming from. And that's a gift. And I, I want, honestly, I want the women who are even older than you to book a session with you in humility to just hear what your life has taught you that can be confirmation in their life. Cause a lot of times when you a coach, it might not be a lot of 28 year olds and younger that mm -hmm. believe in coaching or got the money for coaching, mm -hmm. but there may be a 35, 40, 45, 50 yeah. who really need it. But they, ah, I've been, I've been doing it longer than you've been alive. And, and yeah. I, yeah. I've, I've heard that a lot. You know, all my life. I got a grandchild your age. Yep. <laughs> and they'll say stuff like that and assuming that just because they've lived longer that mm. they know more. And it's not that they know less. It's just that they could know different. Right. And exactly. then being, having the wisdom, like, like the good book says, there's wisdom in a multitude of counsel. Absolutely. And Absolutely. so I listen. Imani, I have seen your face on my mentor.life, and I believe you did the featured coach. On, yes. you, you were a featured coach on the homepage. Yep. And I've seen your name popping up. You've been supporting. You just, you've been yep. there. You've been 
learning and growing and feeding yourself. So I've seen your name several times, but now that I get to talk to you, it's my first time really yeah, yeah. face to face like this. I just want to encourage you to you. go deeper, like keep okay. writing, keep writing, keep expressing, keep utilize all the time that God gives you. The yeah, job yeah. may yeah. drain you and all of that, but I want to see your blog because I, I that blog gonna hit. Just I want to see your yeah. blog, and then when you do the blog and you get you about ten posts, then let's figure out a little promo package, post it to the YouTube my yeah. YouTube community, so they could go and subscribe and be reading it and just kind of growing with you, y'all yeah. going, yeah. and they could submit questions. Don't be afraid of YouTube. Don't yep. you know, don't be afraid of a second and a third and a fourth book. You know, don't be afraid of a nonprofit organization. Mm -hmm. Don't let that job be the ransom they give you to kill. Right. You know, right. Like the quote. Because right. you got something. So now how can people reach you? Do you have a website and a mymentor.life or just mymentor.life? Yeah, good question. So Coach Imani on Instagram is definitely the best way. I personally answer all my DMs if you ever got urgent questions. And then there's a link in the bio, which is Linktree slash Coach Imani. You'll have my, my mentor on there. The link to the book is on there. Email, everything is on there. So Coach Imani, Instagram or Linktree is the best way to find me. That's amazing. Imani, I hate to do this to you. <laughs> I, I so hope you get so overbooked. <laughs> I, I, I hope you be so overbooked you just be just spinning in clients <laughs> thank you the, the, where you have to sit down and be like do i need to go part-time on this job right <laughs> i i want us i want to see the lord usher you full time into that, that purpose over there you even know that's, that's the purpose yeah. i want to see the lord usher you full time into that right there that coaching that yeah. author that speaking all of that so yeah. keep going thank you so much for joining us and sharing you know your presence your heart oh, your wisdom you. with us and i'm wishing you the best thank you so much and thank you to you honestly like the personal impact in my life and also professional growth i would not be where i am without having great role models as well so thank you i know it's not easy and the sacrifices you and your family make to make this possible but thank you because you are speaking the truth and saying what needs to be said and you helping us get it together. So all at once. But so thank you for your dedication too. Like it's it's amazing. I only change lives because people like you change ours. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And to everybody who is watching this, please reach out to Imani. It's Coach Imani on Instagram and she has the link tree there. If you are in a position, even if you're not in a position, borrow the money from your family member and book your session. Get you a session just so that you can meet somebody like-minded who is doing and serving. And it's just, we got to come together. We got to support each other and make sure you lock in, catch us on our next interview. God bless you, Imani, and everybody watching, and we will talk soon. Bye, everyone.